The following is meant for entertainment and educational purposes. It is not meant to establish a doctor-patient relationship. Please consult your mental health provider for your mental health needs. Hello, welcome to Shay Arik, my home, where we talk about psychiatry and religion with a focus on how to apply it to your life. And today we will be focusing on the lecture three of William James's The Varieties of Religious Experience, uh, titled Realities of the Unseen. And this is where William James kind of wants to talk about how do we handle things that we cannot see and what is truth in it and he really kind of goes deep into it. Last time we talked about objects of our consciousness and William James points out that religious things aren't things that typically you can touch and feel with our senses but they're still important for us to know because they kind of influence our actions. And this time today we'll kind of be going deeper into uh, his next you know move of the concept of understanding what we cannot see. In this part of the lecture, William James talks about this thing called um, a sense of reality. What does he mean by that? Well, he talks about this sense of like a, a feeling of an objective presence, a perception of you know what we call like something is there, something deep, more general than just anything in the particular senses, something that isn't in the senses of you know seeing and hearing and touching and tasting and smelling, something outside of that. When we hear, touch, taste, you know, see something like that, we perceive it as sense and it becomes our reality. But if we were to have a hallucination, we started hearing voices that, that's not there, we would actually perceive that as our reality. So our sense of reality is certainly influenced by our senses, even if reality doesn't have those things. So if you have a hallucination, you're smelling something that isn't there, or you're seeing something that isn't there, and you react to it, right? Then that isn't reality, but we perceive it as so. So our perception of reality is different with hallucinations. However, beyond even that, beyond the false or the true senses of our like physical or our physical space, there seems to be this otherworldly sense of reality that he describes. And one of, he gives a lot of examples and a lot of quotes in his lectures. I encourage you to check it out. I don't want to pad this video with a bunch of, you know, me quoting lectures and uh, uh, quotes from him because they're very, very long. But one example he gives of, is one of his friends who had this feeling of someone grabbing him in the middle of the night. And, you know, he, he didn't understand what it was. There was nobody there. It was very, very strange. And uh, William James, he co commented that his friend could have interpreted it as religious, but the friend interpreted it as something else. One example I will give is um, from Madame Ackerman, right? I think there was a short enough quote that kind of really hits it home. Um, Madame Ackerman says, this feeling is sort of of unreality. Um, when I see myself surrounded by beings as ephemeral and incomprehensible as I am myself, and all excited to be pursuing pure chimeras, I experience a strange feeling of being in a dream. It seems to me as if I loved and suffered and that ere long I shall die in a dream. My last word will be, I have been dreaming. So this is an example I want to give of this sense of what, what James would call unreality. So there are positive senses where we have, you know, you feel, you touch, you see things, right? Uh, you hear things and there are positive senses, even if it's not there. Then you also have some sort of positive sense of reality of something that's kind of exists, that's kind of there, kind of relates to what is friend. But you also have senses of unreality as well with this example, of like in a dream state and whatnot. The reason why he wants to point out this relationship to reality, to our senses, is because he wants to point out that this presence of these objects of abstractions and whatnot, they fluctuate over time. And when they fluctuate over time, they also coincide with our fluctuation of our faith, right? And because a lot of times when we believe in God or when we have interaction with this presence that's uh, beyond us, that feeling helps us with our faith and we therefore believe. However, when it's not there, our faith fluctuates away from that and we kind of feel uneasy. There are a lot of times when, uh, let's say, my friends uh, would say, I, I know God exists, but I haven't really felt him in my life. I feel really confused. And it's this really strange thing that we can't really touch and feel. So, and, and how do we handle that? What, what is this 
thing that we're talking about. And so this concept of reality, a sense of reality, is what William James wanted to highlight in continuing his lecture series, because then he's going to go into another really cool concept, and then a really finally good concept in part four. All right. But for now, uh, we'll, we'll stop here. What are your thoughts? Have you ever had this feeling of something is there, you can't really describe it, that's beyond just your senses? Are you the type to just say, it doesn't exist, it's all in your brain, go see a psychiatrist and get yourself fixed in the brain to do that? Let me know your thoughts below. Do like and subscribe. Uh, I want to hear from you also, and I'll see you next time. So there are going to be some minor delays with the book. I originally wanted it out in July 2020, but it'll probably have to come out in 2021. It's a bit of a long story, and I'll explain in a future heart to heart. But in the meantime, I want to thank you so much for your support. This YouTube thing is really actually kind of fun. If I really think about it, you know, making videos and writing books. So I'm enjoying the ride. I hope you're enjoying the ride too. I'll see you later. Bye.